Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and it's time again for Mego Horror Figures. Mego itself is horror enough if you ask me. I didn't ask you, and if you hadn't stolen my shit. I told you, Gorilla, that necklace is haunted, and so is that damn doll. The doll? Huh? The figure? <clears throat> is it haunted? It's just shitty. But I like the necklace. Didn't you see that episode of the Brady Bunch? The necklace is cursed! Well, I don't have it anymore, but I'll tell you what I do have. Mego horror figures for the next two weeks! Oh, let's just get this over with. Raz Holly, hit the music! Mego Horror. Looking back, the horror figures have really saved the modern line. New Mego went from being a disappointing mess to a thriving line in just a few releases. This bought Mego the time to take care of some quality issues and really hit their stride. So much so that I have too many figures to cram into one episode. This week we take a look at four Mego Horror offerings. Teen Wolf, the titular Creeper from Jeepers Creepers, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, and the Candyman. No, nope, there it is. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and take a look at some Mego horror figures. All right, so here is Michael J. Fox as Teen Wolf. Um, no, no trademarks or anything like that. So feel free to use this logo on um, whatever you like. Um, uh, according to the box, says horror. So don't argue with me. Um, this is technically a horror figure. I don't know if that was necessarily a horror movie, but you know we can argue about that later. Let's take a look at this figure and let and and the box more specifically we're looking at right now. 8 inch action figure 14 points articulation official limited edition action figure with original detail and quality. Marty Abrams presents Mego Teen Wolf. Um, Michael J. Fox? Question mark? I don't know. Does it really look like him? We'll see as we get the box open. I think it looks fine from here. Um, we see some reused parts already on those uh, shoes, those white pointy toed elf shoes that are supposed to be tennis shoes that we're using nowadays. Not a big fan of those, but let's turn the box around and see we have actually some, we have a photo from the movie and we have our, our logo for the world's greatest Mego monsters. And of course, all the other bullshit you would expect. Uh, in, uh, including, um, you know, an appearance by Migo Marty. And uh, we got some uh, some various other bullshit and legal, legal mumbo jumbo, jumbo, including um, some official trademark stuff for MGM, who owns Team Wolf, apparently. And uh, yeah, made in China. Big fucking surprise. But uh, more importantly, let's get this figure open and see what it looks like inside the box. So here it is. It's Teen Wolf. Not the Teen Wolf. Not MTV's Teen Wolf. But uh, Teen Wolf from 1980 whatever. Actually they shot this at the same time as uh, Back to the Future. Or, or maybe before. I know it was around about the same time that they shot this movie and then ended up releasing it afterward to kind of tag along on the popularity of one Michael J. Fox, who was already um, a budding star in his own right, being on uh, Family Ties. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Michael J. Fox. And uh, as far as the likeness is concerned, I mean, it looks enough like who it's supposed to be. We have the, the high school uh, varsity jacket on. Um, of course, if you remember the film, he is a, a basketball player 
Um, on the inside, we've got sleeves that go all the way down. That's, that's not bad, it's kind of cool. Got a, a, a button-down shirt on there. That's kind of awesome. We've got some nice little pants on, and of course, the stupid boots, no socks. Come on, amigo, fucking give us some socks. He was wearing socks. I'm pretty sure he was wearing socks. But anyway, uh, we got uh, the, the uh, sculpted fur on the hands here. So that's pretty cool. So it kind of adds to the uh, to the monsterness of it, the wolfiness of it. He's got 14 points of articulation, just like always. He's Amigo. Um, does all the cool shit that you would expect him to do. Um, still a, a banded figure, no, not a uh, S-type figure, not yet at least. Um, if you wanted to, you could actually do the conversion and make an S-type figure. Um, if you can afford it, to buy S-type bodies for every single one of your fucking Migos and make the conversion. The, the only problem... Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Um, the only problem with the new Migos, you can't put these heads on S-type bodies because they're on a little peg. And uh, the, the you got to figure out some way to, to make the conversion on that. You got to get the little headpiece that goes with it. So it makes it a little bit more of an expensive ordeal um, getting a Mego, a new Mego head on a uh, S-type body because they have, a, it's the reverse process. The body's got the peg on it. So, um, but yeah, there he is and his head just fucking fell off. Um, but yeah, they pop right back on easily enough. And that's it. That's fucking, uh, <laughs> that's Michael J. Fox as Teen Wolf. Okay, so from 2001, Jeepers Creepers, um, that is actually uh, celebrating an anniversary this year. 20 years old, the movie is. So is it a classic? Uh, that can be debated, but it is kind of old at this point. It is 20 years old. Um, here, here is the titular Creeper from Jeepers Creepers that uh, hunts down the... Uh, the the main characters and uh in in attempts to uh to, to kill them um in, which is the ensuing uh horror of the from what i remember of the fucking movie don't remember much if you can't already tell but that's not important because we're looking at an action figure here and uh he looks pretty fucking cool uh jeepers creepers eight inch action figure 14 points of articulation marty abrams presents migo official limited edition action figure with original detail and quality it's all there um as always 17 and up um this of course was made after um, we've learned the, the the sad truth that uh, eight inch clothed action figures are are downright deadly to anyone under the age of 17 um that's probably not it i'm fucking around but Look at this figure. He looks pretty cool in the box. You can see the entire thing. It looks like he comes with a little a little hatchet, an axe. Um, I wonder if his hands are built to hold it or if he just has some shitty Mego hands. I guess we're going to find out when we open it up. As we turn the box around, we have a hideous depiction of the of the Creeper. Um, not hideous because of the, the awesome uh, makeup design and, and work that they did and practical effects in the movie itself. But the, the fact that it is so fucking pixelated, it like, it's like it's made of about eight pixels. There's jagged edges all over the place. It's very low resolution and uh, kind of a bad look, Migo. Um, we're selling this in fucking stores. It looks like uh, somebody can make this. I can make this and actually do a better job. I'd find a better picture to use. Um, but anyway, it's got all the same shit you want to see on the back of the box or you would see on the back of the box normally and your legal, legal mumbo, mumbo jumbo, jumbo as usual couple of credits let's get this goddamn thing open and see what it looks like outside of the box and here it is the creeper wow very very fucking cool um from head to toe he has the the, the ratty old jacket that's been distressed and torn and fringed out um he's got the uh some, some pants that are all stained up and fringed out at the bottom. A holy old shirt. And of course, look at the sculpt on this fucking thing. Very, very nice. Very hideous. Very good job on the sculpt here on the Creeper. Uh, very, very cool. Also comes with an accessory. I almost forgot. Here it is. Um, the, the little hatchet, little axe he's got. 
you can slide it right in the hand, I hope. Let's see. Um, yep, it's got them shitty Mego hands, so boop, boop, oops. Uh, uh, oh, also, um, the, the, the bits and pieces of his fucking jacket are just falling off all over the booth. Um, the figure's falling apart. He can't hold his fucking accessories. Um, this would have been better off to hold in the box, I guess, um, because display is going to take a little finagling, a little stick em, a little goo, a little glue, and maybe one of those little clear rubber bands that they're so fucking fond of using. Hey, how about instead of putting clear rubber bands and stuff, we just give them hands that can hold their fucking accessories! Jesus. This one almost was a good figure. This was almost, um, almost there. Nice, nice try. Um, missed or hit the tree, missed the target. All right, so let's take a look at Candyman. Um, actually, Candyman colon Farewell to the Flesh, which I believe was the sequel. The original was 1992. The, uh, this one is from 95. Uh, I believe this is the one that takes place during Mardi Gras. Uh, we have uh, Tony Todd, the the, the Candyman, um, depicted here, and, and he looks he looks pretty good actually, um, and has the hook hand, and uh, we have the bees in the background here, and, uh, and all of course all of the the, the great Nego stuff. This is a, a good looking package, honestly. If you're uh, you know there's not a lot of stuff they make for Candyman now that they got a new one coming out. Maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll put together some some new figures or something like that but i don't remember a whole lot of shit coming out for this movie so if you're a fan of this franchise this is what we get um and it's you know by nego standards this is not fucking bad at all it's got the leather trench coat um and uh looks to be dressed appropriately again the hook hand there um we'll see how that works out when we get the uh we get the figure open let's turn the figure around we see tony todd's big face on the back and all of the, of course, the legal mumbo jumbo, as you would expect. Of course, MGM. Are we seeking a little bit of a pattern here? Looks like Migo made a deal with old MGM and got some of their uh, their licenses, which might seem like this is sort of a slapdash, you know, just a, a configuration, conflagration, combination, whatever, if you will, of different figures. Um, all of them so far have been MGM figures, um, and, and yeah, actually, you know, honestly, it's a coincidence. But anyway, uh, Candyman, farewell to the flesh. Let's see what Tony Todd looks like outside of the box. All right, so here he is. It's the Candyman. You say the name uh, three times, and uh, he shows up, and um, was it three times? I can't remember been a while since I've seen them. But the, uh, yeah, you say the name and he, and he shows up and starts just fucking killing fools. He's got his jacket here. He's got a nice little uh, uh, bodybuilder uh, tee on underneath with a tie. Um, that works. I don't know why they, they set it up like that because this is a pretty loose jacket. Um, we got the, here's the main event. We got the sculpt of the head and we got the hook hand. The hook hand is actually another piece that's attached to the, where the, the hand would attach and then has another piece of a wrist. I knew it looked a little long, um, so really can't go uh, too shirtless with this. And when you see when it hangs down, it looks a little long. Um, I thought maybe originally it was broken. Hey, they could have figured out a better fucking way to do this. The, 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 they got a shorter piece to peg on to the, to the, uh, the, the wrist hole. Um, but beyond that, not too bad. Probably another one of these ones that's gonna look better inside the box. Hey, if you're a box collector, these things are right up your alley. Um, for me personally, I like to open these things up, experience them, see what they do, see what they look like, see what kind of poses I can get out of them. Not that I would be surprised um, to see what kind of poses I can get out of Amigo figures since the bodies are all the same, baby. With a few exceptions, uh, according, uh, you know, including this little hook hand. Um, you could actually take this off and put it on other guys if you want to and make a whole new guy. A, a hooky hand man. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, there we go. That is, that is Tony Todd as the candy man. And I for one, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool fucking figure. I'm glad he's in my collection. Okay, and finally today, uh, we take a look at our last uh, MGM 
figure. It is a Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. There actually is two of these out there. One, he is in the, the blue jumpsuit, the Action Jackson style jumpsuit. Um, this one, he's in the, uh, the, the, uh, the straight jacket, um, and has the little, little mask, um, the Hannibal Lecter mask, um, that, that we're all familiar with. We'll see how that turns out. Um, I don't know what's going on with it. There's some weird twist ties or something holding it into the box. Hey, let's see if we can get it out without fucking ruining it. Anyway, on the box here, we have the picture of uh, Hannibal Lecter uh, staring into our very souls. Um, Silence of the Lambs, great thriller from the 90s. Um, everybody remembers it. The guy, he ate the, the fucking guy's liver with uh, Chianti and, and made a spitty sound with his mouth. And it was disgusting. He's supposed to be a guy from fucking Baltimore but has a British accent. Nobody uh, even gives a shit about that because he tore a guy's face off and wore it as his own face. Here's, the, here's the, the poster from the movie, The Silence of the Lambs. Trademark. Uh, that's MGM, baby. Another Metro Goldwyn Mayer Studio. Studios production um, for this video. So these are the MGM Horror Migos uh, today. And uh, yeah, and it was all a fucking coincidence. Isn't that awesome? Um, but I can't wait anymore. Let's get Hannibal out of the box and see what he looks like on the inside. All right, so here we are. I'm looking at this now and we can't just, it doesn't just slide out nicely. Um, I have no idea how it's attached or where it's attached or how I'll attach it to the back of Hannibal Lecter's head once I get it out or how to get it out because we have this little twist tie thing that's shooting through the back of the package. I pull that out. Well, I hope it's not broken because if it is, I'm fucked. Hey, look at that. Would you look at that? There's just a little clear. Hey, one of their clear rubber bands. These are, th anyway, let's get this thing put together. Go, let's trash out of here and see what it looks like. All right, so I have got to admit, this is a fucking cool figure. Um, it's uh, Hannibal Lecter with the little mask on so he can't uh, chew anybody's bodies anymore. And the straight jacket, which is all, um, it's sewn on, maybe? No, it's Velcroed on the back. So you can take this off, put it back on, put it on another guy if you want to. Um, do do what you like with it. You can take all these clothes off, put them on another figure, um, you know, throw the figure away, burn it. It doesn't matter. He's wearing this stupid fucking Richie Cunningham uh, elf shoes. Those suck. Um, but beyond that... Um, this is pretty, they should just put the fucking moccasins on them. Those look most like, uh, prison shoes. But beyond that, we've got the little clear rubber band that's sticking off the side of the mask that you really can't figure out a way to hide. I guess I'll trim off down to the, to the knot on that and hope it doesn't come untied because otherwise that's a fucking wrap on this mask. Um, the mask fits pretty well on the face. You got to maybe make a couple of little adjustments here and there, but otherwise looks pretty awesome. Looks like he does uh, in the film. Um, got the, got the little mask off. It'd be cool if we got a little gurney to go with them. That might have, you know, brought, drove the price sky high. Um, and now that I've heard that a lot of these things that are going up online are going for not just $15. <laughs> oh no. We're talking 20. We're talking 30. We're talking $40 for a fucking Nego figure that is barely improved from the, the, the quality of the ones that they were releasing two years ago, three years ago in 2018, when they started coming out with these pieces of shit. But that's that's beside the point because this figure um, was, a, was a figure that I got at, at a regular price, at a good price, at a, at a fair price. Um, so, um, I, I don't, I don't have any complaints there as far as that's concerned. And as far as a horror figure is concerned, we know exactly who this is. We know who it's supposed to be. Maybe the likeness isn't 100%, but it's enough there, um, that, uh, it, it makes sense to me. So that is Hannibal Lecter. Well, that's it for week one of Mego Horror Figures. Let us know what you think of these figures in the comments down below. And hey, by the way, during the review, I found my necklace. It was in my pocket the whole time. See, Gorilla, nobody stole your stuff. I think you owe me an apology. Well, I'm sorry. Hmm. That you're such an ass. <laughs> oh, anyway, stay tuned next week for even more Mego Horror Figures. Raz Holly, hit the music!
Thank you.